Well, Apple shares down nearly 4% on an otherwise up day for tech stocks and the market. Part of that may have to do with a big ruling in a monopoly lawsuit involving the iPhone. A federal judge says that the suit can move forward as a class action. The suit itself claims that Apple and AT&T created an iPhone monopoly by making it available only on one carrier for five years and not disclosing to purchasers of the product that they can't take their phone and use it on another network. We're joined now by Mark Rifkin, lead counsel in the suit. Uh, Mark, thanks for joining us. You did just get this uh, word that you can proceed with the class action suit. There are 50 million purchasers of the iPhone over the past three years. What kind of numbers are we talking about? Well, there's 50 million purchasers worldwide, Margaret, but there's a smaller number in the United States. We expect that the number will be between 15 and 20 million purchasers here in the U.S. And our lawsuit has now been certified so that we can represent those U.S. purchasers of the iPhone. But we are talking about a very large class of as many as 20 million users. Dollar-wise, what, what kind of ballpark are we in in terms of, of the cost to these consumers that you're looking for in a, in a settlement? Well, regrettably, because some of the information that we've obtained from uh, Apple and AT&T is protected by a confidentiality order, I can't share with you too much information, but I can tell you that uh, the damages that uh, the plaintiffs are expecting in the case mm -hmm. are huge. Now, I mean, when you purchase an, an iPhone, you're saying that uh, it wasn't made public to those buying the product that they couldn't take their phone after their two-year expiration with AT&T, their, their agreement expires after two years, and then take that product and use it elsewhere. But when you're buying an Apple product, aren't you buying into that ecosystem by choice? I mean, why is it significant that Apple is making the decision as to what applications you can consume? Well, two things we need to be clear about. First, we're not just talking about the period after the two-year contract expires. And the second thing we need to keep in mind is that everybody who bought an iPhone also had to sign a service agreement with AT&T. Mm -hmm. That service agreement gave every one of those customers the right to pay a $175 termination fee, terminate their service at any time, and like the purchasers of any other cellular telephone in the world except for the iPhone, they expected if they could terminate their contract, they would be free to take their iPhone and use it on another cellular network. And so you want example, those phones unlocked so I could take my iPhone I bought three years ago and take it to Sprint or Verizon? That's Well, it would be T-Mobile in this case because it would have to be a compatible technology, but that's exactly right. The idea is if the consumers are given a choice between competing uh, service providers, then those service providers will have to charge a more competitive price rather mm -hmm. than one that is what we call super competitive or monopolistic. So is this point moot though given that the exclusivity is believed to be ending in January? Well, I haven't heard anything from Apple or AT&T that's official. Mm -hmm. So the answer to your question is no, it's, it's far from moot. Well, it'll be uh, interesting to see what precedent this sets for some of the other uh, class actions that are being efforted at this point with the new iPhone 4. Um, so we'll watch this and we'll watch your progress. Thank you for, for coming on and explaining this. Thank you very much.